A recruiting breakdown on Chalk Talk today brought to you by Craft Treats. And I'll tell you more about Craft Treats and the chill pills that are fantastic. Don't forget to use the promo code to get 20% off and just use off the hook and you are good to go. 20% off with that promo code. And it's fantastic for your pet that might have digestive issues or arthritis or um, just anxiety in general. So that's uh, fantastic, especially during the holiday season. That would be a fantastic place to go. Go to crafttreats.com and use that uh, promo code off the hook and you will get 20% off. Chris, let's talk uh, Boo Hoo. Boo Carter out of uh, Chattanooga announcing a top 12. There was a lot of chatter that he would just go ahead and announce that he was committed to Tennessee. It's the only place he's visited. What do you make of – let's start with what do you make of his recruitment, and then I love your evals on these players, and we'll get to that. Yeah, you know, I mean, everything I've heard of the young man, I know a number of folks have offered him you know, back in the summer, and it's always been considered that Tennessee's the team to beat. What's the hold up? Why he doesn't commit? I mean, you never know with that. I don't know the young man. I haven't talked with him, so is it something they want to do at another time where other family members can be there? There's a lot of drama that goes along with these kids' announcements now. So I don't necessarily have gotten any indication that Tennessee's lost any steam with him. Um, it's certainly at a need spot. He's an athlete that could play safety. Um, I think built really athletic. I mean, I think that we'd be a really good fit. He's a basketball player. He's got the, those type of hips to be a really good player. Um, and, and I haven't heard anything other than Tennessee with it. I mean, I've heard other names on the list, but – you know, it's just kind of like Tennessee, and then here's some other folks that he's talked with. Um, so I think it would be a surprise at this point if he doesn't go there. But he's a really good athlete that can play in the secondary in a couple of spots. I, I think that's where they're going to play him. Um, I think that's how they've recruited him. But he has some ability athletically to play on both sides of the balls, uh, as he does for the Chattanooga there. So Chattanooga Christian. Yeah, Chattanooga Christian. So what do you think the, the of... The Chargers, I believe, if I remember my recruiting days. Is that right? Goodness gracious, well, that's think, a memory think, right there. Uh, <laughs> that's great recruiting talk brought to you by Craft Treats. Again, use that promo code off the hook for 20% off those chill pills. Helps with digestive issues and also will help with your pet's uh, arthritis or potential anxiety. So... Uh, Boo Carter, um, you, you think he'll play where? I know you had mentioned that, but how versatile is he? Is he a guy that could get there and there's uh, play, uh, just be evaluated when he gets on campus? That We don't see as much of that anymore. Tennessee was known for moving guys from running back to linebacker, a lot of those guys in the 90s. But we don't see that as much. They usually show up with uh, an intention of playing one position by the coaching staff. But uh, how versatile is he, you think? I think he's pretty versatile. I, I like him as I like him in the secondary most. I think he's got um, the ability to line up inside in the slot, and I think he can line up at safety, be real effective. That's where I see him as the best fit. Uh, but that's also where I've been exposed to him the most on film. I have not obviously worked him out and seen what he might be able to do on offense. But I think the I think they're looking at him. Um, in the secondary, mostly, and, and again, that's where I think he's a better fit. Let's stick at uh, cornerback or defensive back. Caleb Beasley will announce his decision uh, Friday night. Uh, Nashville native. I think Tennessee's in great shape there. What are you hearing? Yeah, I, I, I'm hearing that they're in uh, good shape as well. I, I actually have not only watched this guy on film, I mentioned this on, on earlier uh, – uh, when I think we talked in the summer, which is why you, you need to be listening to us because we, we've been on this guy for a while. I saw him uh, this summer in LSU's camp, just right down the road from me. So I saw him, and they had a couple of good ones. He had a few good ones in there, and he was really good. He was, as I described him, very smooth in coverage. Um, he's got ability to lock down the mirror receivers. He's just a little over six feet, 180 pounds. Um, I thought he was technically advanced for a guy as a, a junior. Uh, I thought he did a good job in that seven-on-seven seven stuff, staying in phase with the receiver, being able to mirror them. Uh, and I thought he made a number of plays on the ball. He's in really good shape. I've always felt like with him it was Tennessee. And the only other 
serious threat I felt was Notre Dame, but I, I never got the feeling that it was a, I thought it was Tennessee and then the rest with Notre Dame leading the pack of the rest. Interesting. Um, now he's related a cousin to Aaron Beasley, uh, who plays at uh, Tennessee. It, it's when you say advanced, I mean, that's what Tennessee needs. Despite the fantastic run they're having, they could use some guys that are, are ready to play, especially in the secondary. Yeah. And, and whether you're, you know, in, in advance from a technique standpoint, it, it doesn't, I, you know, it's, it's really hard for those guys to line up as a freshman and have impact, but, but it's possible. Um, but from a technique standpoint, a lot of these guys have natural ability day, but they just, they don't play with really good technique. They, they line up incorrectly and then they just fall step. So even though they've got athletic ability, they don't do things the right way. And, you know, maybe it's, you know, taught and they freelance a little bit, you know, but, but he, when I say he's advanced, he played with really good technique. He was sound uh, in his alignment, his positioning. Uh, as I said, he always stayed in phase. He always knew how to really uh, turn his head at the right time. All those things technique-wise was, was pretty good, which you don't always see with some of these young guys that have a lot of talent. They sometimes rely on that and are not as sound with their technique. I thought he was. Mizeo Bennett, Tennessee's newest commitment. It is kind of funny. He says South Carolina was a close second. So I don't know that <laughs> this recruitment's over just because a, a prospect announces that he is committed doesn't mean that all the other coaches are just going to back off of him. And he has visited South Carolina a ton. But let's let's assume he, he is going to uh, end up at Tennessee. He announced his commitment to Tennessee on his 17th birthday, uh, which would have been October the 16th. Um, your thoughts on Mizeo Bennett and the type of player he is? You know, he's 5'11-ish, 175 pounds. Uh, he's class of 2024. Um, he's pretty good length. He's got really good quickness. The thing that jumps out at me is that he can play inside or outside. So he's got the quickness to play in the slot, but I think he's fast enough to play outside wide. Um Productive high school player, uh, natural pass catcher. I like his ball skills. I think they're good. Uh, I think he can high point ball, so he, that's where his length comes in. He plays a little bit bigger than his size. I like his body control. I think he can adjust well to off-target passes. I like his release off the line of scrimmage. It's pretty clean there. Uh, I think he tracks the ball very well. I like the, the, uh, the, the play after the, the ability to make plays after the catch. Um, you know, I think one of the things I look at is how natural are guys to make what I would call out of frame catches. Is it, you know, because it's one thing to make them, but it's, it's better when they can make them and it, they make it look easy because when you make it look easy, it's natural. It's, you don't need an extra human effort to make a great play, which sometimes average guys can do it. He does things pretty naturally He's a willing blocker, which is important, particularly what they do. So I think this guy's good. I'm wondering, and I was thinking about when I heard that uh, he was, uh, you know, in good shape with Tennessee. There's another South Carolina receiver that had a pretty good game last week that South Carolina didn't offer. Clemson didn't offer. So I'm talking about Mr. Hyde. But Bennett is somebody that I think, um, you know, they are very well aware of and I don't know if they're going to make up any ground. This is the type of guy, I will say this from South Carolina standpoint, that they need. They don't have enough of these guys. But this is a case, too, where you've made a lot of strides. This has become now receiver you. I'm old enough to remember, and I'm going to throw you under the bus, too. You're old enough to remember when Tennessee was wide receiver you. And they had all those guys come in. I mean, Carl Pickens types. And you go there and you just go to Tennessee Go to Knoxville, and there's going to be plenty of receivers under the Christmas tree, the recruiting tree anyway. And now it's kind of becoming that again. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go there as a receiver? I think this is one that you wonder if they can get in from South Carolina based upon what has really happened there this year and the role that they're on offensively, particularly with the development of receivers. And, uh, again, Mr. Hyatt was another one that uh, – <laughs> I, I will say this, that was Will Muschamp's full pie, not offering him. And But Clemson didn't either. Wow. 
That's uh, pr- pretty insightful. I um, it, it sounds like Tennessee is com- starting to compete with some of the guys, in particular Bennett, that the, the big schools want. So we've yes. talked about this before. Tennessee either had to get on a guy early or get a guy that they saw more potential than maybe the Alabamas and the Georgias of the world. But I'm starting to see the Alabamas and the Georgias mentioned along with some Tennessee prospects. Are you seeing the, the evolution of Tennessee's recruitment in terms of being able to compete with the big boys now? Well, the two that we just mentioned, Beasley and, and uh, Bennett, are, are, are what we call or, or what fans are noted, noted four-star guys. And, and I think Boo is trending that way too, although he's mostly kind of considered three-star. He, so you're getting into where you're recruiting guys that are at a higher level. Now, now remember, Jalen Hyatt was, a, was would, would consider like a three-star guy. And again, the system and, and a lot it's got speed. So, yeah, I think this is an important step, and we've talked about it with some of the defensive guys. If you're not recruiting the four- and five-star guys, if you think that you're going to get three-star guys and you're going to beat the Georgias and the Alabamas consistently, I know it's excitement. You beat them once. You're not going to have a consistent-level program. Being great is doing it on a consistent level. In order for Tennessee to do that, they're going to have to recruit those same type of players. You know, Auburn beat Alabama three times, too. But they weren't recruiting as well under Gus Malzahn and and, uh, under Brian Harson to compete with Alabama on a consistent basis. Oh, they can beat them. Again, Gus did it three times. But they're not winning at a high level, and and you got to recruit like Georgia. You had to recruit like Alabama. You had to play one every year in your division, and you got to play the other every year out of division. And you're not going to get where your ultimate goals are unless you're able to do that and you recruit at that level consistently. This is a year where Tennessee's got a mature team and everything is going co- correctly. But that's what Georgia and Alabama kind of minimizes is even when they have quote-unquote down years, they still have more talent than you do if you're in a quote-unquote rebuilding year like Georgia and Alabama and you're not nearly as talented, you can go from 11-1 and to 8-4 and very easily. That's That's about exactly – even worse, that's what Auburn did, basically. Well, yeah, you throw in some other factors and dysfunction and then then you got a lot of issues. But you can be really good, have everything the same – you lose some key guys like a key quarterback, a young quarterback, you use the receivers. All of a sudden, that is where your team is built, and you become, you know, an 8-4 and four team overnight. And, look, we saw that 2019 at LSU. That was maybe the best offense we've ever seen. And, you know, they lose key guys, and what happened? That coach is fired two years later. Now, I, that wasn't, in my opinion, a very good coach, and – Josh Apple's a better coach, but you can go from being, you know, on top of the hill to being pretty, you know, just pretty good in a year or two. And so that's that's the goal is while everything is exciting is the, the goal ought to be consistently good. Anybody can have success on a given week and win a big game, but can you do it consistently? I mean, A&M beat Alabama last year and went eight and four, you know, so it's like, what can you do? for consistency during the course of the year. If Tennessee, like most people are thinking, oh, they're getting ready to take over the, the division, what have you, let's pop the brakes on that. Let's let them finish the year and let's let them recruit and build off of the success of that so that they can consistently be not a team that is an eight or a nine win team, but can consistently be a 10 or a 12 win team because the only way to do that consistently is to have talent that can match the others because not everything is going to fall right for you every year. And if you're playing four or five teams on your schedule, that's equally as talented, then you have to have a lot of things go right to win 10 games. If you're more talented, then you can have some issues. I mean, that's one of the things we saw with Tennessee and when they'd been the last time they've been consistently successful, a lot of criticism for, Randy Sanders, Philip Former type guys, but they were more talented. And maybe they'd win games, quote unquote, ugly, but they'd win because they had more talent. Now you're seeing Tennessee kind of everything fall into place and getting a lot of guys to mature at the right time. More talent is what's needed 
to be consistently good and competing like the fan base can uh, hopefully celebrate more. Uh, hopefully it, it becomes more of a, of a, of a common place than, than what last week was. Feel free to write in who you would like to hear evaluated from Chris Landry as recruiting never stops and is getting into full swing. And why let your uh, pet suffer when all you have to do is get some chill pills from crafttreats.com. Use the promo code off the hook. Again, the chill pills will help with uh, any sort of anxiety. They will help with um, also digestive issues and arthritis. So that's crafttreats.com. Use the promo code off the hook for the chill pills. He's Chris Landry at LandryFootball.com. I'm Dave Hooker. This is a presentation of Off the Hook Sports.